Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Welcome to another Battlefield Terrain tutorial. So in this video here we'll be looking at a desert themed battlefield uh, here. So it's a combination of some scratch built terrain uh, and then also some pre-painted terrain uh, as well. We'll cover things like accessories uh, across the battlefield. There's a few walkthroughs I want to go through with you as well just to explain uh, how to upgrade pre-painted terrain also how to scratch build some terrain uh, for a desert style battlefield for your games of 40k. So if you stay tuned in this video, I'll take you through the whole process. So from start to finish, from the foundation all the way up to the finishing touches, so that you'll be able to recreate uh, the exact same battlefield that you see before. You just follow along step by step. There's different things involved, uh, battle mat, pre-painted terrain, scratch built terrain, accessories and so on. I will go through each of those stages so that you can create your own uh, battlefields for your games of 40k. So there are a few videos in this series already, uh, do check those out. Uh, if you scroll down on the channel homepage to the terrain and painting tutorial section, uh, you'll see a number of tutorials uh, for the various battlefields that we have on the channel. And then as per usual, I'll put links in the video description below. It should also be in the comment section as well, uh, so that'll give you uh, the exact details that you need uh, for materials, products and so on uh, to recreate this table. So, like a desert outpost going on here, uh, great for armies like my Thousand Sons who look particularly uh, at home on this table with the brown and sandy basing that I have for those. Uh, so they would look particularly good on this desert theme. Uh, there's other elements as well that, especially with the scratch built terrain, that's not 40k themed. So if you keep elements of 40k out of it then you could use that for other gaming systems as well such as such as age of sigma historical games and so on just sort of generic desert type terrain uh, so you can use that in other systems also so we'll start with the foundation as per usual it's a battle mat here that sort of gives you your uh, color spectrum here to work from so you're building up from these base colors that you can see on this battle mat and then uh, working your way up to uh, the large buildings uh, and accessories on the board so this battle mat is called Sands of Time. Uh, it's been reconfigured, it's from gamemat.au. It's been changed to an updated version, which is Sands of Time version two. Uh, the color scheme uh, is the same, uh, just the layout here. This older version has like a dried river running through it, which you can sort of see running through there. Uh, the newer version, that river's been taken, and just been replaced with more uh, random details across the battle mat. So you not don't have to fit the river uh, as much you can encroach on that and, and put train wherever you want without having to follow uh, the path of the river so a bit more freedom with the new updated version but you'll see that i'll put a link for the new version uh, in the video description below uh, there's a slight difference but uh, your basic foundational colors uh, remain the same so this one's six by four in size uh, so for our games uh, strike full size games of 40k we just mark the boundary here with some accessories some pipes and barricades and so on uh, but they do have battle mats in the appropriate sizes for the different size battles uh, so you can pick and choose what size you want for your own games uh, six by four is useful for us we just uh, mark it off there but when we spin the mats around join them together and so on for apocalypse battles it's handy having the six by four uh, size mats but you're free to choose whatever size you want and uh, they also produce double-sided battle mats as well so you get a different design on each side uh, so you can get double uh, the value out of your mat so that acts as your foundation rolls out nice and flat just roll it up store it away uh, and then rolls out nice and flat nice and soft it's nice and quiet for dice rolling uh, and then figure friendly as so if models fall over during a the game they're just going to land on a softer surface uh, as well not rough nice and smooth so terrain will fit nice and flat on the surface of the battle mat as well all the coloring has been done for you so you can that's your colors and you can work from that as you build your terrain up so that's the foundation now uh, we'll move on to some of the larger uh, features here of the terrain so really there's two main elements to this mat first is a pre-painted terrain set which i've uh, color corrected and adjusted 
Uh, and then also scratch built desert terrain which you'll see more around the edges uh, these pieces across here I'm going to do a walkthrough on that so I'm going to guide you through how to create your own uh, desert terrain this set I've had created one set uh, about 10 years ago and I'm still using it in games so once you put the effort into a terrain set it can last you for years and years uh, and we've played so many battles with it uh, on the board and these terrain pieces you can just configure them differently uh, use them combine them with other terrain sets and so on so plenty of use out of that set uh, and it's lasted a good 10 years now uh, on the channel so we'll start with the easiest part that's the pre-painted terrain set uh, here so again it's from gamemat.eu uh, it's Rocky Base Set, it's called. It's quite a popular set from them. Uh, it includes two of these, these like missile silos. It includes this larger building here with various entrances and a nice flat platform on top. It also includes that terrain piece across there, like a, a bombed out ruin. Uh, and then just to point out that the ruin is removable so you can uh, place this somewhere else or you can put it uh, where it fits just on there but that is uh, removable and then also this uh, much larger piece on here like a missile silo type thing on top and then uh, an area here for models climbing up so that's that pre-painted terrain set uh, I'll put a link for that in the video description below now it has been color corrected I've adjusted the color scheme on it to match in with this mat very very easy to do so if you go on the website, you'll see the original colour scheme that comes in. It comes pre-painted, uh, multiple colours here, the rocks uh, painted with uh, brown, some uh, black going on there as well, and then a lot of metallics being used on the platform. Now I had used this uh, set on and off, but it never quite matched in with this particular battle mat. So I've taken that process before where you use sprays to colour correct. So easy to do. I've done it on multiple sets from gamemat.eu uh, and then tried to match it in with the colours that you can see here on the mat. Just really is important that the terrain all sort of matches and, and flows in together. So to give you an idea, if I flip this over, it'll show you sort of the original colour that comes in. So this brown. So it's okay, but it doesn't quite match in with the desert colour scheme here. So that's sort of the base colour they use. Uh, then it's sort of painted and highlighted with different shades. And there's a bit of black being sprayed and then the metallic's been used here. But to get it to what you see there, this kind of desert finish, which matches in with that, you just simply use spray cans. Uh, and to, to color correct this terrain set, took me 10 minutes, didn't take very long at all. And then a bit of painting took about 15, 20 minutes as well with some inks, uh, very, very straightforward. So the colors that I used to correct that uh, is just two colors being used. So again, I'll put links in the video description below. Uh, it's Army Painter. I do like their sprays for terrain work. So this one's desert yellow. And you see the color of that just matching in quite nicely, sort of a mid-tone for this desert terrain. And then just as to act as a highlight uh, is the skeleton bone uh, from Army Painter and that color nicely matching in with the battle mat just there. So uh, a light dusting of this. And the idea is that you, the, the spray is sort of dusting across the metallics. Uh, adding those colours onto uh, this brown, so you're transforming that kind of brown into something like this, and you're sort of dusting the colour across, still leaving about half, if not a bit more, of the original colours, and then you, you're just dusting across to introduce these colours here, just to correct it and get it to match into the battle mat. So a little bit of this one, the mid-tone first of all, and then just a, a quick spray. Uh, around with this. No need to shield the metallics. The idea is that some of those colours go onto the metallic just to dust it all up and to blend it in nicely uh, to the terrain. So same process here and on this larger building as well. Very very straightforward. So then it looked okay but I wanted to add in a bit more detail onto the metallics so you can see this kind of rust work that's been done. Uh, so that's just taking serif from sepia, medium sized brush and then just flooding that in to the metallic areas around the edges, into the grills here, uh, running around the edges here. Not onto the uh, the stonework here, didn't need to add any extra to that, uh, but just onto the metallic areas. Just wash that in, just to introduce another tone and to make it look a bit more weathered as well. That took about 15 minutes to do and uh, very happy with the outcome here. This is uh, matched in very nicely with the battle mat. So just placing that piece back there. Uh, you don't have to do that. The pre-painted, it comes fully painted. Uh, the pre-painted terrain so you can unbox it and use it straight away. That's the idea behind it. But if you do want to match the colors into this particular mat, 
then that's the sprays that you can use or you may want to change this to something else you could introduce a bit of green uh, if you've got like a jungle battle mat and you want to color correct your terrain uh, then it's very very easily done uh, very very straightforward and it means that your terrain matches in with your mat uh, and it just looks better on the eye uh, and it matches in nicely realism it's always been realism i've gone for with my terrain terrain creations uh, here and it's uh, color corrections very very easy to do with spray paints very straightforward very quick and uh, that's the results that you can get so the next uh, thing i want to talk about is something a bit more complex this is scratch built desert terrain uh, so various pieces on the board uh, like rocky outcrops here, uh, much larger pieces, smaller pieces here, like flatter rough ground areas, uh, larger pieces here, a little sort of valley or a little walkway going through, larger piece across there, smaller piece there. Uh, that is part of my desert terrain set that was created about 10 years ago. What I'll do is do a walk through here, sort of guide you through the whole process. Again, very, very straightforward, more time consume, more effort. Uh, but a set that could last you for many years uh, and great for games of 40k and if you keep it uh, if you don't add in 40k accessories to it keep it quite generic for desert then you can use it for all sorts of gaming systems so the first part to it is your foundation your base for this i've used different materials over the years plywood's okay it's quite thick it can warp with gluing and so on uh, so what i've used I've used this for most of my terrain sets uh, is the vinyl tiles which are easy, easy to get a hold of and uh, I've got an example of one just here it's like a desert sort of coloured one here so this is a one foot square use these for sticking to floors people use them in their kitchens and bathrooms and so on uh, so it comes with a sticky back like so which you could stick down to create a table if you really wanted to but uh, I usually take you can just trim around this and leave the sticky back on if you want to remove that and to remove the stickiness from it entirely uh, then I've just used paper I've taken the sticky back off uh, and then stuck paper on there and then just trimmed around uh, to remove that entirely you can see the glue start to absorb into the paper but it's never really fully come through so there's no tackiness there at all uh, but you cut that out to the shape that you want just random rounded shapes. It generally sits nice and flat. Vinyl uh, at room temperature will sit nicely to the surface. If you left this, it's, an inter it's interesting stuff. Uh, if you left that at room temperature, it would gradually sort of warp down. It sort of conforms to the, the shape of what it's on. So when you store it, try and store it nice and flat because it will bend a little bit. Uh, but usually it will sit quite nicely. If there is a bend to it, uh, it'll usually it'll just start settling down and sit nice and flat for you. It's nice and thin as well, so there's not too much of a ridge there going on uh, when combined with the terrain. So the next stage is to, to build the thing up. So it looks complex just because it's been finished, but it's actually polystyrene, the white stuff for packaging. Uh, so you cut out pieces, stick them on. To prepare the tile, I usually sandpaper it to scratch into it to break up that smooth surface and scratch right into it once you've cut your shapes out just to give something for the glue to stick right into. Uh, you cut out your shapes of polystyrene, stick them on and let it dry and then after that you then take a knife or you can take a piece of sandpaper and fold it in half and then just make your cuts, uh, smooth it off and round it off and then just create your natural uh, rock shapes. So you can see I've uh, just sort of gone for like a strata pattern here. It's good to just Google some images of, of rock layers and so on, just to give you an idea of sort of the way it looks naturally. But sort of a layered strata across here at an angle. Uh, just cutting in, rounding off the edges and making the shapes across there, a little bit of an outcrop and so on. Sort of a slab just coming up, just to lift the whole thing up. I'll spin it around, show you the design across there. So infantry could take shelter behind that and gain light cover and so on for games of 40k. So that's the structure of it. Now if you spray colour onto that, with spray paints it will melt the polystyrene so that's not good so you want to work on the the layers next so the next stage is i've added in some stones i found these on a beach i gathered them up and polystyrene is nice and soft using pva glue again for you stick the whole thing down and then pva glue for the stones some larger stones and details i just push those into the polystyrene stick them in with pva put some around the base so you're actually using real rocks here. The bulk of it's the polystyrene, and then just using real rocks being pushed in just to add a layer of realism to it. I'm just going to show you a damaged piece, because it will show you what it looks like. 
here. Here's a damaged bit. It's been hit a few times in the game. Uh, but that gives you an idea. If you see there, see the white in there? That is the polystyrene. Like so. So that's just been shaped and cut. Uh, I'll fix that, no problem. It's quite repairable. Just use PVA glue just to stick it back together and then patch it in and fix that. But that just gives you an idea of the colour. It just starts off with stark white with the polystyrene. You can get that from packaging for electrical goods, televisions and so on. Usually come with polystyrene packaging. Uh, it's so very easily available. Very workable, easy to cut and sand and shape and so on. You get hold of that for for nothing really, it's usually thrown away, so uh, it's easy to get a hold of those materials. I've got the stones and so on from a beach, so this is uh, it's not going to cost you very much to create the train set. Yes, the vinyl tiles you get those from your hardware shop, no problem at all. Uh, and again, shouldn't cost you too much for a pack of them. So, the next stage you've got your rocks stuck on, your shapes all done, you want to seal the whole thing up ready for spraying. So I use uh, PVA glue, same glue that I use for basing all my models with sand. Uh, so I just paint the whole thing with PVA glue, do, or maybe do one section at a time, and then sprinkle your sand and stones across to create this rough look. So really the same process I use for basing my models with sand and PVA glue, just use that on the terrain. So just with a larger brush, painting that on, around, and then dropping the stones and scatter on top. And the idea is that you seal the whole thing up, because you'll be able to spray onto the uh, the glue and the sand, no problem without it affecting uh, the polystyrene underneath. So it is important you do seal the whole thing up, make sure you get all of that worked into every detail. So anywhere that you don't cover, the spray paint can get in and start to eat away at the polystyrene. So it's a bit mucky, uh, but once that's done, fully leaving it to dry, and that'll give you all the texture you need, all the details done uh, on the base and then ready for painting and details. So for this one, it was 10 years ago, but I reckon the process I used for that was to spray it in desert yellow again the same kind of color because the colors are matching up quite nicely here desert yellow spray the whole thing that's your mid-tone and then i uh, would have used a lighter tone of shabti bone uh, from games workshop or a similar kind of cream stone kind of color and you're just highlighting the same way you base your models you're just highlighting that color across uh, and across the stones here as well, just highlighting the whole thing uh, with that lighter tone. If you want to go for an extreme highlight after that, then take a shabty bone, mix it with some white for an extreme uh, finishing highlight. So once that highlighting is done, uh, you can then use uh, a wash in the cracks and crevices just to add another bit of detail, more depth to it, so you can run it through all the places like here, just using a sort of medium larger brush. Just flowing that in, just trying to make the whole thing look nice and natural. Sarah from Sepia, uh, you can use that. If you want to go for a darker shade, you can use uh, Agarac Surf Shade. It's up to you uh, how you want it to do it. I, I would heavily advise, if you're going to scratch build terrain, another big tip is to create one little piece. Do all your practicing on that one piece until you're happy, uh, and then go out and create the full uh, terrain set would be the best idea. So do a sample piece first, set it up on your terrain. If you're happy with it, then proceed uh, with a full terrain set. And that's that pretty much done. If you want to go for pure desert, then you don't need any foliage or uh, flock and so on. If you do want to add a bit of dry grass in, uh, then you can use your tufts of grass for the larger pieces, different lengths. You can get those from eBay grass tufts. Uh, and then I've still got a good supply of the dead grass from Games Workshop. I'm not sure if that's still available, but again, if Games Workshop don't do it, uh, you can get a supply of that from your local uh, hobby store, railway, uh, model railway shop, or you can find it on places like eBay. Uh, no problem at all. So that just for finishing off. And if you use those kind of things, that's going to match in uh, with any basing that you're doing. I'm using that process for basing my Harlequins, for example. So the Harlequins there match in nicely uh, with the desert terrain. Same basing process as well uh, for my Thousand Suns. In fact, if you go to the Thousand Suns painting tutorial or the Harlequins painting tutorial on the channel, uh, I think I cover basing on both of those videos. So that'll show you an idea of, of how to get the results that you see here on the terrain. But that's the walkthrough for that. Uh, same process for all of the other pieces, just on smaller or larger scales. You pick what types of terrain that you want. Uh, it's, the height of these is pretty good. We can use those as obscuring terrain. Uh, it's, I like to put things like gaps and things uh, for things to walk through, just to create some nice uh, areas of interest on the table. So that's scratch built terrain. It is worth it. Uh, and it's enjoyable doing terrain. It's a nice break from painting models. I would. Uh, it's highly likely you'll enjoy the process if you separate out some time to do it uh, just as a one-off project 
uh, it's well worth doing. If you've got a friend to work with or at your local war games club, uh, you could all sit and do it together. But sometimes it's a good idea just to get on with it yourself just to make sure the project is completed. Another big advice, big bit of advice for terrain, try and start the project, get on with it quickly, and finish it quickly. Don't let it drag out because you can end up with a project that started and never finished. So try and hit the project and get it done. It's the most rewarding, most enjoyable. Uh, when you get a project that's started you're actually able to finish it entirely and use it in games so moving on that's the bulk of the table filled out uh, next up would be accessories on the board so uh, for this one I've put a large stack of Unitron armor containers you could build them how you want you could spread them around the board uh, I just wanted to create a nice area of interest in the middle of the table uh, I'll put a link for them in the video description below. There's a full painting tutorial for those uh, on the channel. Uh, just a, a big fan of Munitorum Armour Containers. Very 40k themed. Uh, and they're great pieces of terrain to use uh, on the board. So, also there you can see some Imperial posters being used. I'll put a link for that in the video description. There's a full tutorial about how to get a hold of those posters. Uh, how to put them together, how to use them on the terrain. Uh, finishing touches and so on. Covered in that tutorial as well. But... Uh, you, know, you could have sets like this, uh, ready-made stuff, uh, or scratch-built stuff like this, but to turn it into a 40k battlefield, you need your accessories. I think they're so important. So little touches like the 40k pipes, add mech accessories, boxes and barrels and so on. Just turn the whole thing so you know that you're fighting across uh, a battlefield that is from the realm of Warhammer 40,000. So other accessories on the board, your battlefield accessories across here. Some boxes and barrels and so on. Uh, still using this, the older Games Workshop 40k terrain uh, accessories set. I'm not sure if they still produce it. I don't think they do, but you can certainly look for it on eBay. You often find them secondhand. I've picked them up from different places, people selling them on. It was a very popular set uh, the Games Workshop did, so there's still a good few uh, sets of those kicking around. I would say, again, eBay would be a good place uh, to try and search for them. So then the last few finishing touches here. So you have a terrain piece like this but to try and get it to flow nicely into the board I use uh, flock or lichen in a desert sort of color scheme again uh, you get that from model railway shop uh, just in bags or again you can find it on places like eBay and then the other accessory that I use is the stones and scatter so these stones uh, I found on a beach uh, I talk about them in the jungle terrain set, uh, one of the earlier tutorials for battlefields. And that's I took the original stones, sort of this kind of pastel, uh, bricky red kind of colour, uh, and then actually sprayed them with the same sprays that I've used for the terrain. And that means that your colour matching is going to be identical here. So the same colours that I used on this and this I've used on the stones. And that means you're just going to match the whole thing in. Uh, nicely so that's the idea with the stones not too neat with them you'll see that they're just sort of just tucked in nicely but not too neat they don't look like someone's gone around and swept all the stones up you just want them randomly placed on the board and then the final final touches is go to your bits box and just add in little things like this there's a las gun there's a crute hunting rifle just abandoned weapons love those finishing touches here this is a terminator from the Tyranids Toxicrone base for that monster, I took him away, put the monster on a rock instead, and then used that as an accessory. This is the cat from the Space Hulk plastic set. There is a Blood Angels Terminator on a throne, just minding his own business. That's from uh, the Space Hulk set as well. So, little accessories like that. These are Admech pieces here. Just really add a bit of flavour, a bit of story, a bit of narrative uh, to your battlefields. Easily done. Once you've got those little bits created, you know, you just get a, a dozen las guns, paint them up, and you just use them in all your games. City fight, desert fight, whatever. And it's some nice accessories to add in. So I really hope that video has been a help. The idea is that you, it's to show you step by step how you can achieve the results that you see here. It's just a combination of things. Battle mat is your foundation for this particular battlefield. Scratch built terrain. Have a go, see how you get on. At a minimum, create one piece and see how you do. Uh, and then here, pre-painted terrain set, which is the easy way out, it's all construction and built for you. Bit of colour correction, just to match it in with the terrain that you see. Uh, Munitron armoured containers, and then other accessories across the board. And then for ultimate realism, 
some lichen, easy to get a hold of, just a case of buying a pack and then uh, spreading it across the board. And then the stones that have actually been sprayed in with the same colours as the train just to match the whole thing together. And once you've got that bag of stones, you've got it for all of your desert style games uh, and you can use that for years to come. So terrain, it's a bit of work, a bit of an investment at the start, but you can play dozens and dozens of games uh, as you've got a group of friends, you can all work on different terrain sets just to add some nice variety. It's a tragedy when you've worked hard on an army and you've got, you haven't got decent terrain uh, to fight across. Uh, it is a major aspect to the hobby. Yes, painting models, but also uh, the terrain setups are so, so important. So the idea of this video is to help you to show you how straightforward and easy it is uh, to get results. So do check out the previous videos in the series, pick which terrain set you like, uh, check it out and follow the tutorial along and that will guide you through all the processes involved. And then links will be in the video description below, leave a comment, I'll try and get back to you as well if I can be of any assistance as well, but hopefully this has been an inspiration and a help to you. We'll finish this video uh, with some panning shots with some music just to give you a zoomed in view of some of the details featured on this desert terrain set. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.